Shailakshmi Madam? Ma'am. Uh, sir has not joined, no? Did you, sir? No, ma'am, no, ma'am. Not yet. Just a minute, I'll inform him to join. Sure, ma'am, sure, ma'am. Sri Lakshmi. Yeah, Vani ma'am. You are there now. So it's uh, joined. Yeah, yeah, one minute he'll be joined. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, Sri Lakshmi, oh. is it possible to record the meeting? Yes, yes. Uh, I think now it is not. Option is not there, ma'am. Ah, that is what? But YouTube live is there, right? Yeah, it is there, ma'am. It's happening now. It's happening. Now. Okay. Ma'am, no, sir no. is there, ma'am. Tejas, sir, yeah. is joining now. Yeah. Okay. I am there, madam. Has joined, ma'am. Media publicity. Yes, Yes, yeah, sir. Jagdish, sir. Thank you, sir. Supriya, ma'am, sir has joined now. Tejas, sir has joined now. Sir, uh, Tejas, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Yes. Sir, uh, slides you are presenting or? Are... From your side? Sorry, ma'am. Presentation of the slides you are doing from your side, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, sir. Shall I present now? Shall we start? One minute, sir. We'll introduce you and then you can uh, start up. Ma'am, uh, two more minutes, ma'am. Students are joining. Yeah. Two more minutes, ma'am. We'll start. Okay, just, uh, just one minute, sir. No worries, ma'am.
Shri Lakshmi ma'am. Shall we start? Yeah, we'll start. Tejas sir, shall we start? Yes ma'am. Yes ma'am. Okay ma'am. Good morning to one and all. I, Sri Lakshmi, Assistant Professor, Department of ETE, Sir MBIT, deem it a great honor to welcome you all for this webinar on innovation, prototype validation, that is converting innovation into a startup. I take this privilege on behalf of management, principal, faculties, and students to welcome you all to this webinar innovation and prototype validation by Tejas Dunake, Sales and BD Director, High Tech Automation, organized by IIC, Sir MBAT, Bengaluru. The primary idea of IIC is to encourage, inspire and nurture young students by supporting them to work with new ideas and transform them into prototypes. Now I request Dr. Supriya Ma'am, President, IIC, Sir MBIT, to deliver the opening remarks. Ma'am, over to you. Thank you, Sri Lakshmi. Good morning to one and all present here. So I am Dr. Supriya from uh, ECE, Professor from EC Department and also President of IIC. So in the year 2018, the Ministry of Education through its innovation cell launched this innovation, Institute Innovation Council program in collaboration with the AACP for all the higher education institutes. The main aim or objective of this IAC MOE is to provide national platform for showcasing their uh, innovations and also entrepreneurship achievements of all the higher education institutes. So Saranveti IAC Council of was formally registered under MHRD IAC during uh, 2019 August. And the main objective of our IAC is to create a vibrant and also in-house ecosystem for scouting and uh, pre-incubation of ideas to complete the idea to product life cycle and also to produce the budding entrepreneurs. So this is our main vision actually of IAC SRMBIT. So to just achieve this, we are conducting various innovation and entrepreneurship related uh, activities. And we are also organizing periodic workshops, seminars, and interaction with the entrepreneurs and also investors, professionals, and also we are creating a mentor tool for the student innovators. So under this last academic year, under four uh, quarter programs, we have just conducted many of the programs which are related to this IIC, like uh, IPR, cell, and also with respect to this entrepreneurship, startups, and also idea competition, mini challenges. So which involves meant with the involvement of this different in that industries so that the students can have their ideas to be qualified and also to be quantified and in general and also to generate the different forum for the students to exhibit their ideas and also learn about this uh, procedure for entrepreneurship, startup and other things. So this is one opportunity for all of us, even the students and also the faculty to just exhibit our innovation ideas and also on to know about the authorships and all. So with this, I'll just request and also I wish all the students to pa actively participate in this webinar and get the knowledge on this thing. And we have with us today, uh, Mr. Tejas Dunake, who is an, having a very wide experience in high-tech automation. So we welcome you, sir, once again for the session. So all the students, you just enjoy the session and also learn something. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Supriya, ma'am. Now, I invite Mrs. Vanipriya, ma'am, Professor, Department of IIC, as well as Convener IIC, to introduce today's speakers. Thank you, Sri Lakshmi. Yes. Good morning, all. I am Dr. Vani Priya, convener IIC, and it's my privilege to introduce today's resource person, Mr. Tejas Dunaki. Tejas is BE Mechanical from COEP Pune, 
and MBA from Singapore Management University. He worked as senior design design engineer at Larson and Turbo Limited from 2009 to 2013 at Heavy Engineering Division, Marine, Mumbai, and Vishakhapatnam. His expertise includes project execution, on-site work for INS Arihant, India's first nuclear-powered submarine advisor, mostly worked on outfitting of piping and equipment installation, operation. Worked as a member of inventory control team at site. Reduced manners with better planned activities. Process and plant layout for shipyard integrated for uh, saving time and material inventory. Costing or cost estimation. Worked as a team member for preparation of commercial dates for FOV, submerged operating vessel. Identified scope of customer WRP, LNT scope. Calibration of FE foreign exchange content and high value items for major transaction of money. He is currently working as a sales and BD director, high tech automation. He is currently pursuing PhD in uh, laser assisted machining and training. Thank you, Tejas, for accepting to be the resource person for today's session. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Tejas, sir, over to you now. Uh... Thank you for the introduction, ma'am. Uh, so I'll start my presentations. I'll mostly be focusing on whatever I've learned in these past around 14 to 15 years of my career. Whatever I've understood, I've had the privilege of working in Singapore, which is considered as the innovation hub of the entire world. Most of the startups which are registered in, it, uh, in Singapore, they have a very uh, good longevity of considering their uh, lifespan and also the volume that they generate. So uh, first, I'll just focus on, I'll start, I hope everybody is busy, I uh, can see my screen. Yes, sir. So first, we'll start with the prototyping and feel free to, uh, you know, let, let this be an interactive session. If you have any queries, if you have any anything that you want to ask me, please feel free to ask that. So first, the very important thing that we keep on neglecting, especially in startups, because most of these are in engineering students, the right of the audience is the engineering students, they have a lot of ideas. Whenever we go to institutions, I am involved in setting up COEs with Simmons, with Dassault, with uh, uh, DAC, Department of Science and Technology. Whenever we go to any of the big institutions, any of the universities, a lot of people have very bright ideas. They are all full of ideas, but uh, there is a, we have to understand there are a lot of startups coming up in India. The Indian government is actually supporting the startup environment. They are promoting the startups, but we have to understand Right now, if you see the data, 92% of the startups, they fail within first three years. 3% fail in the next five years. We have a survival rate of 1% to 2%. So why is this? Because there is a big lacuna in what exactly consumers are looking for and what exactly we are going to provide them. So the, it's not necessary that the innovative ideas are actually required in the market. If you see, if you see the, uh, we had the privilege of working through STP Science and Technology Park with Sony. So to tell you what Sony had started in the year 2008 or 2009, it is commercialized in the year 2022. So that is the kind of innovation and prototyping that they follow. You might be, you might all, you all might be using uh, Apple and Samsung. You might be aware that the prototypes take almost one to two years. So prototype is not something that only you do with your uh, holding your papers and uh, doing it on your uh, Cutty or 3D software. Prototyping is something that you actually make sure that goes to the market. You get the feedback from the people who would be your target audience, who would be your target customers. And then you make sure that you are actually supplying or you are actually promoting something which is required in the market. So these are actually the prototypes. Prototype is not something that, you know, you, you just, you have set up in your mind that you have made up your mind. Okay, this is what I want to do. Just to make sure that it goes into the market, I'll just prototype it. It is not like that. The feedback is very, very important. We face this right now. Uh, I'll just go ahead. These are the basic terms that are used in prototyping. How, how, how do you do the prototype? So right now, the first step, I would say when we do it for our industry is just to, we draw something on the paper. We try to do something with, out of that paper. Then we go to the 3D softwares. You might all be using 3D softwares like Simmons or DASA or PTC. There are n number of 3D softwares are available. Try to find out from your instructors, from your teachers that government of India is promoting clusters. Government of India is promoting CIIIs. That is a center for incubation, innovation and invention. Where these high-end softwares are available. If you have something in your mind, if you think that you have an idea which can be commercialized, 
go to these centers try to find out what you can do with them try to use these softwares which are commercial they are costing 20 30 40 lakhs a, a license you can use them you are getting these kind of environment almost in every every big city almost in every big state now so try to make use of these uh, uh, facilities that you have try to find out what you want to do so why prototype is important because with prototyping you get to understand there are there can be many obstacles hidden you might have an idea but that might not be suitable to manufacture you can maybe design it in 3d but when once you go for manufacturing the manufacturing uh, cost can shoot up there are a lot of products if you see the uh, manufacturing cost of any of the commercialized product has to be less than 30% of the selling value that is the thumb rule that everybody follows if you are buying an iphone of 60000 rupees the manufacturing cost of that is 5500 rupees that is that is why the prototype is in, uh, the prototyping is important if you get to understand what color you are going to use what kind of manufacturing process you are going to use there you understand if your manufacturing cost exceeds 40% that we call, call as cogs cost of goods sold if it is more than 40% your product is going to die it is not going to survive in the market there are a lot of aspects like operations there are a lot of aspects like sales marketing then uh, there is service all these parameters you have to consider so first of all with prototypes you have to adjust the design adjust the colors provide the quality assurance make sure that the product is the longevity is good it survives in the market measure the accept acceptable tolerances see i'll be mostly focusing on only the uh, hardware part of it because i belong to mechanical engineering my entire career has been into a mechanical so i don't know about the software as much so i unfortunately cannot focus on the software so when i talk about the hardware prototyping know the true cost of production that is very very important find out the processes involved something looks very good when you are doing it on uh, on, on a 3d software try to find out the process that is required for each and every part try to find out the process required for the assembly that is where you understand whether it is commercially viable or not find out the efficiencies and savings if you have to scale it up what kind of savings you can achieve out of it so what kind of scalability you are looking for what are what is your bandwidth what can be your bottleneck these things you have to find out modify your tooling tooling nowadays is very very important that is something in engineering we don't get to understand we don't understand the value of tooling if you go to a ceramic tooling a one tool break will cost you in lakhs there are tools which are diamond tools there are very expensive tools which are required which are being used for your manufacturing of your cell phones this tooling is very very important that is why the industry 4.0 the tool life tool life optimization has now come into the picture because people have understood the actual value of tooling with the prototype you can find out what kind of durability you can achieve with your product and again there are n number of conflicts that can happen you might have your partners you might have your stakeholders shareholders there might be investors in your in, in your company so with the prototype everybody is going to have different imaginations different ideas so conflict is something which you in case if you go out end up designing some product you are going to face lot of conflicts with all the stakeholders so is prototyping necessary in india yes it is absolutely necessary considering the scale of india although india is very big uh, most of the part of parts of india especially the seven sisters the eastern states of india are not very well connected so if you are looking for durability if you are looking for longevity the product has to be proven completely the cost of travel the cost of transport in india is not actually at par with the world it's much higher if you go to the asean countries the transport cost cost is much more lower than india so when i talk about minimizing the risk if you have a prototype if you are making sure that everything is in place all these costs are going to reduce which you might eventually face so uh, test ideas prototypes are actually great way to find out whether your ideas are going to work or not when i spoke about the clusters or the c triple i's that the incubation center there now the uh, the government is promoting to have 3d printers so 3d printers are not only the plastic or polymer printers which are very commonly available everywhere there are 3d printers which can actually print metals with a tolerance of 3 microns that is 0.003 mm which is even very difficult to achieve your see with your cnc machines 
these 3d printers are now readily available as far as i know sitting in maharashtra i know that these 3d printers are available in pune mumbai kolhapur near belgaum and karnataka these 3d printers are very readily available you can hire these printers for maybe some 10 or 20000 rupees of uh, an hour so if you are yes, tejas sir slide moment is not happening sir it's not happening yes sir and it is not in full screen mode also sir just a minute i'll share it again yeah yeah sorry for that can you see it now the slide name is the heading is why should i bother prototyping yes sir it is clear now like sir, full screen now in full screen mode slide share mode sir slide share mode put sir slide share mode only ma'am no sir we are able to see the entire screen actually not the ppt okay sir still sharing a window i guess is it moving at least now yes sir moving is happening sir okay, okay. so uh, testing the ideas yes so a lot of people nowadays are coming up with elect, uh, electric vehicles a oh, lot of people are coming with evs so there or even drones so drones is something which is going to pick up to see the the way indian government government is opening up they are allowing the drones to be manufactured in india maybe for warfare that is what they are looking for maybe 10 years down the line we have to have our own drones like what turkey is having right now what israel is having or even the smaller countries like italy and spain they are having their own drone system which we don't have so that is why they want to promote this drone manufacturing there is a huge scope for it so if we talk about drones it's entirely a prototype based so there are tools there are that is something that is very interesting as well for engineering students there are tools like 3d printers with you, with which you can immediately within a day you can manufacture a drone you can prototype a drone up to a payload capacity of 60 kg which is good enough we all are seeing what ha- what is happening in ukraine right now drones are changing the game plan everywhere what what happened in armenia or azerbaijan so drones is something which what we see is indian government is promoting like anything they are giving you they are allowing you to import items from the allowed uh, allowed countries so that is where the prototype comes into the picture once you have a good prototype once you analyze that you can scale up the production and the market of india the especially whatever good you can do it can be sold in india the way our country is growing there is scope the pie size is big enough for everyone you have a good product you can sell it also once you have a prototype it provides you a sense of ownership you understand what exactly your product will look like you feel more attached to it that is where the more you attach to it more you can develop it so also there would be a lot of insights what we analyze what we think that is not going to happen there are lot there are a lot of changes you'll have to do there are a lot of uh, optimization you'll have to do so that uh, the product is actually market ready and once you have a product if you are going to sell it if you are going for an invest uh, investment i mean you are going to a funding partner or going for a fundraiser if you have something in your hand that is going to fetch you more funds that is going to fetch you more funding as well so prototyping you find out a way with 3d modeling you can do it with 3d printers you can do it with routers with cnc machines you can do it but the prototyping is must to make sure that to analyze your ideas so yes obviously with uh, what this slide shows is prototyping is going to create a better product so it is going to save you 2 3 4 or maybe 6 months of work once you go into a production the kind of uh, amendments that you have to do the kind of uh, rectifications you have to do a lot of that cost can be saved with prototyping so what are the first steps of actual prototyping how do we do it in industry or what my experience is of how exactly you have to do the prototyping first of all you have to have an idea you have to understand what you exactly want to do you have to understand why you want to do it is it really something that 
you want to do it or is it really something that is needed in the market which can have a good target uh, audience or the target customers only innovation or only some a good idea cannot be sold into the market if it is not really needed so draw the sketches talk to your friends talk to your instructors talk to your uh, uh, trainers or maybe your teachers to find out whether it is really required in the market or not to find out a 3d printer if you have 10 15 20 ideas hire a 3d printer get it printed get it uh, uh, there are a lot of polymer printers which are very cheap i mean which are very uh, very easily available 1000 rupees an hour so with their speed you can maybe type 300 by 300 mm prototype within 10 minutes so if you have 10 prototypes you can do it in just one hour there is a very limited cost attached to it so you can do that have a physical model or you can do it in a wire frame you can do uh, most of the colleges are having welding machines you can carry out welding have a wire frame design try to find out what you want to achieve with that as i said ask yourself whether how this product will be useful for users it is not only the technocrats or your innovative concept that is going to be sold if users are, are in not in need of that they are not going to use it find out your target audience find out what their uh, economical capacity is whether they can accept this whether they have any kind of substitute item at a lower cost if you have a very uh, just to give you an example few years back there was a discovery of uh, electric toothbrushes actually a wonderful product but that time it was costing somewhere around 6 to 7000 rupees whereas you go to a, a medical store you can buy a basic toothbrush for i don't know maybe 30 or 40 rupees although that discovery was absolutely brilliant the kind of dc motors they had used the size they have reduced the longevity of the product absolutely brilliant but the the product failed miserably now there are companies like xiaomi and if i am not wrong maybe philips they are coming up with a uh, very viable toothbrush which is costing 600 or 700 rupees now that is again gaining the market that is catching the market now so you have to understand what exactly user needs although it's a good product it was a very good product patented product it failed very badly the company which was actually which had uh, launched that product is now a bankrupt now bankrupt it's not that the, uh, the the technology was bad but there was no need at that price in the market you reduce the price you have to have the optimum balance between your pricing between your innovation and the need of the user so think about all these cases whenever you are going for uh, with a new concept you have to understand that you are investing a lot in in the form of time you are investing your uh, peak years of your career in in this kind of a product or maybe a venture so analyze it very carefully find out the possible cases read the case studies there are uh, i understand you are engineering students even i am i was an engineering student but try to focus a little more into the management perspective of it try to there are you might be having your friends there are a lot of authors like michael porter or uh, you just find out these strategy gurus uh, michael porter is the founder of uh, monitor deloitte you might have heard about this try to find try to analyze the case studies whether it is worth to go ahead or not because at the end of the day the, the investment is in the form of time which cannot you cannot get it back so try to find out competitive products which uh, people are using try to find out what their pricing is how much is the competition in the market don't only search within your industry try to you know try to search it across the borders try to find out with, because there is a threat of substitution if the market opens up tomorrow your product is going to get substituted so also find out whether what you are doing with your concept or ideas or innovative idea whether it can be done with a scale down version to enter into a market whether it can be done at a lower price to make sure that it is a viable economically viable again find out the target users and find out their economical capacities if you are targeting upper middle class or lower middle class with a target income of 60000 or maybe 1 lakh to 2 lakh rupees a month then how much they are going to spend on your product how much they will be spending on their lifestyle how much they will be spending on their entire day to day use because you will be going b2c or b2b b2b is business to business b2c is business to customer consumer so you have to decide whether people will be interested to shell out some more money in an innovation that they might need or might not need these all parameters have to be thought of 
in case if they decide to go for this technology it can be any technology for that matter are they really looking for this are they going to get benefited is their life going to improve or maybe their daily life can they integrate that particular technology into their daily lives if they can do it then there is nothing like it then that is a lifetime business for us again don't get tangled with your own expectations try to think from outside of the box you place yourself in the shoes of the buyer and ask yourself whether you will buy it or not with all these things in mind you have to design your product with the target audience you have to amend you have to amend your processes that's why the prototypes become more and more important in case if you have to reduce the price then you will have to reduce you will have to change the entire procedure of this particular manufacturing procedure of your product that way you can make sure that the product is in li in line with the requirement then set your goals when you are doing a prototype set your goals why you want to do the prototype what exactly you want to achieve with it would you like to find out whether it is suitable to manufacture whether it is suitable to market whether it is suitable to pack and forward all these things you have to find out with your prototype what kind of fidelity you want to set fidelity in the sense uh, it's uh, how, how much details you want to give to your prototype whether you want to do one is to one one is to one in the sense the same prototype can be manufactured and immediately given for the production or you want to do it you want to give it to your friends for trials you want to give it to some target audience for your trials then the fidelity can be less determine that and then decide your goals and go ahead with the prototyping process more importantly now the prototype is done so who is going to analyze that you cannot analyze your own prototype you'll have to go to experts you'll have to go to the people who might end up using that product so go to them again decide what you want to achieve and then follow the procedure that you have set up if you want to have a quantitative feedback you might just email it to them maybe whatsapp it to your friends and then, the, then just the, get the quantitative feedback if you want to get more qualitative feedback then you'll have to have the in depth interviews one on one interviews give the product for to users find out what exactly they want out of it find out if you can improve it from the user perspective find out if there is any ux that you want to develop for that and then again as i mentioned please look into this startup india initiative a lot of people i have seen that are not aware about this a lot of engineering students are not aware about the initiatives that our government is taking up since i am involved directly with these initiatives i know that there are very good initiatives started by government which are state of the art which are much better in terms of infrastructure as compared to the engineering institutions or the universities that are there in india right now so look for these kind of setups they are doing hand holding a lot of engineering students who have a very good idea they are absolutely unaware about the taxation they are absolutely unaware about gsts ebay bills these are the things which will land land you in trouble so these initiatives incubation centers they are helping you out with these kind of uh, something that that is not being taught in the engineering uh, colleges the tax consultations the strategy consultations the strategy is very very important only technology is not going to sell your product although it can be a wonderful product it cannot be sold on its own you need to have a space you need to have a, a complete infrastructure to manufacture this to sell this so there are co working spaces there are incubation centers where you can find cnc machines the routers cnc routers 3d printers 3d scanners there are 3d handheld scanners which are very readily available in these centers i do not know which, which is the center nearest to your uh, location but please go to this website startup india has a dedicated website to it and look for these kind of centers where you can go and test your products they are they have done a wonderful setup especially for the uh, prototyping part of it they call call it as idea to prototype so if you have an idea they help you to make it a, make a prototype out of it and then they sorry, sorry. sorry? yeah and then they will analyze whether that prototype can be commercialized or not if it can be commercialized then there are again a lot of they call it as yojanas that is nidhi prayas where they are ready to invest up to 1 crore in your startup on a equity basis equity is something that you don't have to return it back to them 
they become your partners the government becomes your partner and then it's their responsibility as well to promote this product it's not a loan it's absolutely not a loan the equity is the best thing that can happen to a startup so look for these kind of uh, schemes which are readily available make sure that you make full use of it obviously you'll have your own ideas but drones evs these are the and uh, going to the next slide so when i talk about innovation unfortunately i don't have many slides on innovation because that is something innovation you can't really put in a slide but when i talk about innovation right now there is the out of box thinking is required i see a lot of engineering graduates even in maharashtra or the no northern part of india a lot of people are coming up with their own evs electric vehicles you might might be seeing in your cities and your towns as well that lot of ev manufacturers are coming up is it really the need to go into the market with the same ev that someone else is manufacturing uh recently uh, i don't know if you have heard uh, mr nitin gadkari speak but he had very spe specifically mentioned that each fuel station with petrol and diesel can cater for 100 vehicles that means for 100 vehicles petrol or diesel vehicles you need one fuel station but the ev charging station you need one charging station for two electric vehicles considering the time required for evs are to charge so there is a huge scope if you see right now what we are doing the jammu and kashmir has a requirement of 4000 electrical uh, charging stations that is where a lot of innovation is required uh, there is a huge opportunity for this the market is moving towards that so that is where you have to think out of the box rather than doing something what someone else is doing and improving a little uh, improving it a little bit so that is what the innovation is just to give you an idea even in drones innovation there is uh, there is no limit to it what you can achieve with a drone there is no limit right now people don't can't even imagine that where this industry will move forward there are uavs unmanned aerial vehicles the way there is a company called as combat robotics it is started by one of my very good friends is just one year senior to me from my college you see the net turnover of that company is more than 200 cr when he started it was hardly 2 lakh rupees what he is doing is is doing a robot which is used to find out the land mines in kashmir so you have a look at his uh, website it's called as combat robotics that is where the innovation is moving if you have a good product and he is an incubator that company is an incubator of science and technology park so when he came up with an idea he didn't have anything at all he came from a very uh, modest background so the the government invested in companies they provided him with the platform and now there is no limit to it he is manufacturing almost each and every mine uh, mine finding robot is manufactured by him so this is where uh, the innovation comes into the picture when i was working in singapore there is one more case that i would like to share when i was working with uh, working in singapore with monitor deloitte so there was a concept uh, there was a business called as bread talk so they initially they had a very basic uh, shop kind of a thing where there was a counter and the bread and n number of different products were kept behind the counter like what we have in india right now when the son came up and he joined his mother the, uh, the business was started by his mother so the only thing that he changed is he removed the counter he kept all those breads and uh, the dairy products or whatever the cakes and everything uh, very accessible to the customers he asked the customers to pick up the product and bring it bring them to the a very small set of counter and then get it built so rather than them asking the salesman to give it to them what he did is they, he asked customers to roam around the uh, shop and get whatever they want that way the visibility of each and every product increased by multifold within a year their turnover increased by around eight times that is 800% so these are the these are also called as innovations innovation cannot be only in the form of technology innovation can be in any form you can innovate some of the new techniques for operations or the transport or the packaging that is what the industry needs you don't have to just go and just design something where you will manufacture a six axis robot what the us or japan is doing already you might do something where you can integrate their products and make a better use of it reduce the cost if you see the economics reduction of 10 or 20% of the cost can have huge implications on your net i mean the bottom line bottom line of any company that is what they are looking for if you consider 
if you have some better technique to even control the signals the traffic signals of a big city you can end up saving tens of crores of rupees in fuel every day by optimizing a traffic smart signal what the government is doing right now already if you can optimize a smart signal depending on the traffic it's, it it won't be based on a timer depending on the traffic it will change dynamically you can have a drone surveillance they are doing this in a city called as kollapur in maharashtra they are doing this in the bgs of junctions they are having a surveillance with a drone camera and depending on the data that they get they optimize the signal patterns so this is an innovation this is where you can end up saving the cost and last i think this is sir slides are not changing sir no no there is no slide at all ma'am i'm just discussing this because i'm not mentioning okay. anything on the innovation there are no slides yes. i have not made of this i just wanted to share my experiences thank you sir thank you and one more thing is uh, when i i was working with a guy called as michael porter so you can look up uh, uh, look him up on the google you find out that he is the one who had started monitor one of the biggest uh, strategy consulting firms and he has a concept called as porter spy forces so what are these portus spy forces whenever you go into industry that is the these these spy forces whenever we are venturing into a new industry or a new uh, i would say the target consumer base these this is the only parameter that i personally consider or the my, my company considers very useful have a look at it if you have something in your mind if you want to go ahead and compete in the market please analyze these spy forces they have helped me a lot whenever i have gone whenever i try to do something new so these five forces are first and foremost competition in the industry so that is a existing rivalry that means if you want to manufacture a cell phone would it be possible for you you would end up although you might have the best of the product maybe better than iphone but it's very difficult to sell considering that the reach that they have the marketing capacity the budgets that they have it's very difficult so if you want to go into manufacturing electric vehicle can we really compete with bajaj and can we really compete with ether or ola very difficult the kind of capital required would be much much higher so if you are going into a niche field new field please find out whether what is the kind of existing rivalry in the industry then threat of substitution so threat of substitution is uh, people used to have if you remember uh, uh, i don't know when I, i was i was in the school or college as people used to have shops where they used to scan it for you for engineering projects and all nowadays it is all done by your mobile apps nobody uses scanners no more so that is the threat of substitution if you invest what are the chances that going ahead within a month or year or maybe few years your product will be entirely replaced so what we used to have the nokia is the biggest example that particular phone completely got replaced by a smartphone blackberry completely got replaced although they had the best keypad you i guess you are in the last semester you might not be aware about all these things but when we were in college the or maybe little, later than that blackberry was the biggest thing before apple came into the picture so that is a thread of substitution then the power of suppliers so when i talk about power of suppliers assume that you are manufacturing an ev you are buying your bldc motors from bosch so can you have your own terms with them you cannot they'll push all their terms on to you it's very difficult to survive with that so look for something where you can actually make demands to your vendors the next one is power of customers that means if you are selling it to say people like bajaj or people like uh, tesla there are a lot of people in india also who are doing the job work for tesla okay so if you are selling it to tesla then you cannot have your own terms they will dictate the terms with that doing business is impossible you have to analyze what kind of power your customers hold so these are the five basic and also the potential of, i mean the last five forces the fifth force is the what is the potential of new entrants so if you go into the industry right now it, it's actually workable you are a small small uh, player in that what what are the chances that someone else with a much bigger budget will come into the picture if you remember right now we are seeing uh, zomato and swiggy but this entire concept was brought up by a small company called as food panda so this food panda could never actually raise the funding and since they could not raise the funding they were substituted immediately it got taken over so see these companies so even though you have a very good concept but if you don't have a base to fight the biggest competition 
you are not going to survive this so when having an idea is a good thing but actually making it commercialize and actually earn, earning revenue out of it it is the biggest uh, obstacle and again i am saying hardly 1.2 to 1.5% startups survive in india i am not saying that they are flourishing in india i am saying they are surviving in india so we have to look at it very carefully whatever we are seeing as a success story it is the tip of the iceberg there are a lot of people who have failed so whatever you are doing please have a detailed plan do prototyping find out the industry requirements take guidance there is nothing wrong in taking guidance from your seniors from your teachers from the people in industry and try to find out what can be more suited for the current environment going ahead 10 15 years i personally i am very much optimistic that we will see great times ahead of us uh, I'm, i'm not uh, i mean uh, as a country i'm saying not as a any particular i'm not uh, aligned to any of the parties but yes as a country we do see a lot of uh, expectations lot of hopes are there there is a big aura of optimism which is flowing around so we do see the once if you have a good innovation you will definitely have a good market so uh, that's all any any uh, queries or uh, questions you have please ask any questions i am the software the main on the software names for 3d models and all uh sir if you ask me about the 3d models uh in the uh, first one is simens nx very popular the next one is ptc creo again popular the third one is katia and the solid works solid works is a little brother of katia so you go out of solid works there is katia so these are the 3d modeling uh, softwares But also have it in your mind that there are simulation softwares as well like ansys or maybe like hexagon or maybe like uh, msc so these simulation softwares are very important unfortunately we do not give as i don't know about the syllabus that you are having but whatever i have seen this, we are not giving enough importance to the simulation of these products so the stress calculation the what kind of thickness will have the effect on your product how it will affect your product that importance has to be given so with the solid modeling if you ask me about the simulation then katia and uh, ansys are the simulation softwares 3d modeling softwares are solid works solid edge then uh, nx uh, katia and creo okay sir thank you anybody with questions hello tejas sir sir actually that was very good uh, uh you are given a flow like uh, from innovations to uh, prototyping what are the steps and all it was really very very interesting and also very informative so i just have a question is there any forum in the industries where uh, the students can exhibit their uh, innovative ideas and get the uh like uh, feedback from their uh, experts like that but that's what i said uh, with the incubators they have a hand holding where the products that they are designing are actually proposed to the industries i i know a, a a person who actually manufactured an electric vehicle he named it named it as torque so he was an incubator with stp again science and technology park it was proposed by stp to bharat forge and bharat forge completely took it over Okay, okay. So there are incubators. I don't know in your area where it is, but please find out. Uh, I guess in Bangalore, in uh, GTDC is also a very good uh, resource for that. They are also promoting these startups, and they are also now trying to venture into this incubation centers. They are also having center of excellences. So look for these incubators and the clusters from the government. If you ask me about Maharashtra or Pune, I can give you the complete list of it. But in your area, you'll have to look for it. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. I have a question, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sir. Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Shri Lakshmi, ma'am. Yeah. We can hear you, ma'am. Please proceed.
Hello. Hello, Shri Lakshmi Ma'am. Ma'am, sorry, ma'am, network issues. Hello? Sir, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, I can hear you. Yeah, sir. Sir, uh, what is prototype testing and how long it takes for the complete process? A student question, sir. Ma'am, prototype, if you talk about the prototype testing, as far as I know, I was involved with the, one of the prototyping of Vivo mobiles. It took almost one and a half year to test it completely. So when we talk about an assembly, depending on the products that we have, we have to carry out the testing of each and every product or the part of it. So prototyping is a huge field. Uh, it's very difficult to actually uh, uh, trickle it down to just one or two. I mean, to give an answer directly that it will take one month or two months. Depending on the fidelity that we decide, we'll have to go in details of that. We want, if you're sure that we are going to market it, then we'll have to make sure. A lot of places, what happens is once you have a good design with you, you get it out. So you can get it manufactured from someone else. So you need to be very precise with your drawings, with your uh, tolerances that are available. So if you talk about it, all depends on the volume that you want to achieve. So there is no direct answer on how much time it will take. But there are uh, nowadays there are handheld 3D scanners as well. Uh, they're very expensive. There are scanners from HP as well, which will uh, actually scan the product and it will give you the stress analysis as well. So depending on the budget that you have, you can go to the any depth of with the prototyping part. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. And if you uh, recently we had done one prototyping of drone in uh, Begum. So that took almost three days, but now that drone is commercialized. It's an agricultural drone. Within three days, they got it commercialized. They got the funding from the government as well. Thank you, sir. Anybody, please feel to ask the questions to Teja, sir. You have any questions, please. You can type it also in your uh, chat box. Yes, yeah. Ma'am, I think that's all, ma'am. Okay, madam. Yeah. Ma'am, shall we conclude now? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Sir. Uh, thank you, Teja, sir, for accepting our invitation and yeah. enlightening us about prototype, starting from its importance, process of prototyping, putting prototype into production, and funding issues, as well as some practical examples also to our students. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Tejas, sir. Thanks a lot. It was very informative. The session was. Thank you. So I thank the management and principal for their constant support and encouragement. My heartfelt thanks to all the members of IAC or MBAT for their timely help and cooperation. I express my sincere gratitude to all the participants for actively participating in this webinar. I thank all the people who are involved in the smooth conduction of this webinar. With this, we have come to an end of this webinar. Thank you all and have a good day. A feedback link is there in the chat box. Please, all of you feel that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Supriya so, ma'am.